Once you've pre-processed and analyzed all of the data in the Flinker data set, you're ready to run a second level analysis. In FSL, a second level analysis means calculating the average of the contrast estimates from the first level analyses to get a single second level COPE image for each contrast for each subject. From the Flinker directory, open the feet GUI from the command line by typing feet underscore GUI. Then from the drop down menu, select higher level analysis. This changes the input field to select feet directories. Since we had 26 subjects with two runs each, we have 52 feet directories total. Change the number of inputs to 52 and then click the button select feet directories. You could select each of the feet directories by hand, clicking on the folder icon and selecting each one individually. But as we saw with scripting our analysis, this isn't practical for large data sets. Instead, we'll use wildcards to make this quicker and easier. Go back to your terminal that you launched the feet GUI from and type Control and Z and then type BG and press Enter. This will allow you to type commands in the terminal while keeping the feet GUI open. At the command line, type the following command. For details on how this command works, click on the link to the book chapter in the More Info box down below. This creates a list with 52 entries, one corresponding to each run for each subject in the study. Highlight the entire list, copy it, and then go back to the Select Input Data window and click on the Paste button. Then click inside the Input Data window and press Ctrl and Y to paste the directories. Then click OK. Note how this fills in the corresponding rows in the Select Input Data window, and then click OK again. This can take a while to process, so just sit tight. When it's finished, in the Data tab, you will see that there are now three lower-level copes that you can choose to analyze. If you leave all three of the boxes selected, it will run a second-level analysis for each one, which correspond to 1. the contrast estimate for the incongruent condition, 2. the contrast estimate for the congruent condition, and 3. the contrast estimate for incongruent minus congruent trials. In the Output Directory field, type Flinker second level. This is where the results of the second level analysis will be saved. The Stats tab will look different from when you used it for first level analysis. You can now choose between different types of inference, or how you want the results to generalize to the population. The drop down menu has the following options, which are discussed more in the book chapter down below. Since we simply want to take the average of the parameter estimates, across the runs within each subject, we will use the Fixed Effects option. Now click on Full Model Setup. This will open a window with the number of rows representing the number of individual contrast estimates. In our case, 52. For the number of main EVs, change this to 26, which is the number of subjects in our data set, and then press Enter. It may take a while to redraw the window. Then, either using the keyboard or the arrows next to each field, change the numbers in each column to 1 where you want to take the average for the contrast estimates for that subject. In our case, the first two rows for column 1 would be changed to 1, and the next two rows for column 2 would be changed to 1, and so on. This part is a pain in the ass, and it isn't simple to script. So, take your time and be careful. When you've finished, click on the Contrast and F-Test tab and change the number of contrasts to 26 and press Enter. Again, this may take a while for the window to redraw. Change all of the numbers on the diagonal to 1. This tells FSL to calculate an average estimate for each contrast that was specified in the Data tab. This can take a long time, so again, be careful. When you've filled in all the numbers, click the Done button to see the design matrix. Here, check to make sure that the gray boxes are on the diagonal, and that the contrast weights down below 
are a straight diagonal of ones. Now go back to the feet GUI. As with the first level analysis, we will ignore the post stats tab for now, since we're not performing a population inference. We'll cover this in more detail in the next tutorial on third level analysis. For now, click go and let this analysis run for the next few hours. When it finishes, you will see an HTML web page like this, similar to what you saw during pre-processing. The Inputs tab shows the pre-processing and first-level results for each feed directory for each subject, which you've seen before. And also, the Registration Summary tab shows how the functional data has been normalized to a template. If you check the normalization during pre-processing, there shouldn't be any problems here. But take a quick look anyway, making sure the red lines trace the outline of the brain. The results tab will show you the GLM for the second level analysis, along with results for each of the contrasts. As with the first level results, we aren't that interested in the post stats, but do check them for any activation in the ventricles or strong activation at the edges of the brain, which may suggest movement artifacts or other issues. Once you've reviewed the data, you're ready to move on to the last part of statistical analysis, third level or group analysis.